Navjit, great to have you joining us. Uh, could you give us an introduction to yourself and also to Iagon? Hey, Matt. Uh, thanks for having me. And uh, you know, my name is Navjit Dhaliwal, and I'm the CEO and founder of Iagon. I've been working on Iagon since uh, 2017. Iagon is a shared storage and compute economy, basically like a Airbnb for storage and compute. It's been a while since we last talked, and a ton has happened in the interim. Could you give us a picture of where Iagon is at today? There's a lot been happening at Iagon, and we're building out a ecosystem at Iagon with a lot of products that are being built on top of the storage and compute. So we have recently launched our Cyclone, which is basically a storage node that people can plug and play at home. So it kind of creates a lower barrier to entry for, for, let's say, the retail customers and consumers that want to participate in the Web3 economy but uh, don't have the technical know-how. So it's a it basically plug-and-play node, which you can just install at home and, uh, you know, simple instructions and you're online. And we recently kind of previewed that at the Rare Evo event in Las Vegas in August. Yeah. And so you mentioned the word ecosystem there. Is it fair to say that Iagon has an ecosystem, whether internal of its own products or how do you think about that? Yeah, I mean, we have a goal of building dApps on top of the infrastructure that create real world adoption and real world use cases. So we're, we're kind of aiming for something like a suite of apps. Currently, we have storage, something similar to Dropbox. We're building out other apps as well, like web hosting. Right now, we have static web hosting. We're going to have dynamic web hosting soon. Computing uh, is the next goal, uh, which is uh, currently in closed beta. And we had a hackathon in Rare Evo for, for projects to build on top of the compute. Uh, so we saw some great ideas building on top of the compute. Uh, it could be anything from machine learning uh, uh, apps or anything that they want to focus on and build on top of the compute. So we saw some great different ideas and there's possibilities. We also have our own line of products, not just the Dropbox. Uh, we have coming up also encrypted messaging at the end of the year, which kind of like a messaging app, uh, which will tie into the storage as well. And we'll have like we transfer kind of file system as well. A lot of dApps being built on it. So we want to have similar suite kind of like to Google where they have their docs and information and different kind of mail uh, and different apps that they have built on top of it to drive some, uh, let's say, uh, use cases for not just the Web3, but also for the Web2 community and providing also at the same time a more secure, private and cost effective solution. Well, so why would somebody want to use a product or a suite of products like this that are built or connected to the blockchain? as opposed to using something like Google? Yeah, that's a great question. I think that uh, in, in terms of the, the biggest kind of uh, advantage of uh, using not just blockchain, but distributed kind of storage and distributed compute is to have a secure and private network. Uh, right now, there's big problems, for example, in storage. You have a lot of single point of failures. Uh, and we've seen in kind of recent past, every few weeks, there's data leaks, just as recent as the big one where social security records were leaked by the government, right? And the problem here is with centralized solutions is, you know, files are stored in a specific place at a specific time in one place, right? So if that uh, network or that specific server is leaked, all the data within it is leaked. So what distributed storage or decentralized storage helps so with the technology also implemented in terms of blockchain access a layer, which adds another encryption to it, adds more security and more privacy to the network. Meaning that when you're storing a file, it's not at one specific place at one specific time. So if there's a single point of failure, it's not going to leak the file because the only access point there is on on chain, which is the security of layer one, for example. And in this case, we're using Cardano as a layer one, which is very decentralized in itself. So people would have to crack a Cardano or hack Cardano in order to get access to, to the network, right? So this is just one thing where you have the kind of the cost effect, the cost effective is another thing, right? So you have the security and the privacy. We're also able to reduce cost because we're using unused capacity. So in this network of participation, because we're Airbnb for storage and compute, anyone can provide their idle storage or compute to the network, meaning that it reduces the cost by a lot because we don't have any labor employee cost, upkeep costs. All this is done through the reward mechanism of IAG tokens and it reduces our cost by up to 80% for both storage and compute, which makes us highly kind of uh, attractive for not only 
and consumers, but also businesses as well. So where do you see centralized cloud storage and computing going as a sector? And are there any kinds of themes that the industry can learn about here from your experience? I think there's a big difference between you know decentralized and distributed storage compared to centralized. Uh, we like to use an analogy here that we call Secure Lake, and that's kind of what our technology is based on and what our patent is kind of based on. What, for example, centralized solutions do, they have something called a data lake. And a data lake, uh, you know, they have a security around it. So we like to use this analogy of a lake uh, with a fence around it. And that fence uh, is, is the encryption of that specific data. And, and that lake represents a server uh, at a specific place. The problem here with centralized is if you jump over that fence, so let's say a, a person that wants to hack into the system, so if you break that encryption, uh, and I'm simplifying it just to make sure to understand, it's obviously much more complicated than that, but uh, the fence, uh, if you break it, the, the, the person that's hacking it can swim in the lake and collect as much information on many uh, buckets of water as possible. And, you know, and that, that can be leaked uh, to the internet, and that happens all the time. So our solution, what, what do we do is our analogy is basically multi mini lakes that, which are completely frozen. They also have a fence around it. So if we hack the server, then they meet a completely frozen lake and then they cannot access that specific data or, or file. And there's no way of accessing that data without the private key that's accessed only via blockchain technology. So think about this as the, the multi, multi mini lakes that are around, so that's only part of the file that they're looking at or um, trying to access. There's no way of, even if they, let's say, penetrate that frozen lake, they don't meet anything. There's, it means, means uh, nothing, basically. So the only person that can combine those lakes and liquefy it is the person that has the private key. And the only person that has the private key is the person that uploaded that file. So this is a much more secure system because there's no way of knowing where these mini lakes are. It's randomized, right? So when we're actually storing, when we're actually uh, sharding the file and distributing it to the network, it's randomized. And the only person that knows where those random shards are are the other person that uploaded it. So which makes it much more secure and also at the same time compliant with regulations. So if somebody was uh, going to be involved in the Iagon ecosystem now, what, what are a couple of the different roles that you might think about playing? Yeah, so if you, there's two sides to it, right? So you have well, maybe even three sides. So you have the consumers, which are the retail and business, which would want to store files on, on the network or let's say host apps on the network or uh, anything that they want to use. For example, AWS uh, runs a lot of websites, runs a lot of architecture. We're not there yet, but this is something that we're aiming for. So end consumers can store their files, host data, and also host uh, different kind of websites and uh, you know uh, apps on top of it. And from uh, the other side, whereas the people that are providing their idle capacity that are getting rewarded in return for IAG. So the other side is also can be uh, retail or uh, business as well. So we have two sides, which can be two players on each side. And we're just, uh, what we're Igon is doing, we're connecting uh, the two. Through our machine learning model, we're basically learning the behavior of these people that are providing their idle capacities in terms of different variables that are important to the consumers. Uh, so for these variables being performance, availability, trustability, uh, location, for example, for compliance, location is very important and these different aspects, and we basically match them according to their needs. So what else should people be looking forward to? Yeah, we have a lot of things coming out. So like the Cyclone I mentioned earlier, which is kind of out for pre-order now, which you can order now on our website. There's a pre-order page. And there's other coming out like in terms of delegated staking. It's a little bit more technical, but people that are holding IG tokens can basically delegate their ICON tokens to any storage or a compute provider and increase their capacity. So without having to buy tokens to stake them, because as, as a node operator, do you do need to stake IG as a trust bond between the network and yourself? You can ask for other token holders to delegate to your node to increase your capacity. So similar model to what Cardano has, and uh, those uh, that staking will also be liquid, meaning that you can also sell that stake at any time. And uh, we have that coming up, and also we have 
A few other things coming up. We have a complete revamp of our uh, UI in terms of storage. We're fixing that as well. And we have the Wii transfer coming up. We have two catalysts approved uh, in the last Catalyst Fund. And we have two projects that we're working on. One is called a Network Explorer, uh, which is coming out at the end of this year. And then we have Stature, which is a reputation protocol. So there's a lot of things going on. And, uh, you know, uh, I advise you to guys check it out and uh, contact us on socials. Uh, if you if you're wondering about anything, our Twitter's pretty active. So put your notifications on. We're always giving updates there. If some of you wanted to get involved today, where would they go to connect with you guys? Uh, they can go to igon.com and there's a doc section uh, which uh, gives you all the information you need if you want to be, a, for example, a node operator. It's a very simple onboarding process. We have catered to a lot of different software as well. You can install the node on Windows, on Mac, uh, on CLI, and, and many more Synology as well. And also the new kind of node that Node Networks that's coming up, which is the Cyclone, which is a plug and play device. So there's been multiple devices which they can participate in and they can check all that information on our IGON website. Excellent. Navjeet, thanks for joining us.